Hello and welcome to Board Games, Bricks and Hobbies. In 2009, the Lego company decided to dive into the board game business with games such as Ramses Pyramid and Minotaurus. The very next year, in 2010, Hasbro decided, let's scoop up some of that market share. So they came out with the U-Build series. And today we'll be taking a look at U-Build Battleship, which I picked up for $2 thrifting. Uh, now, we'll find out whether or not these LEGO compatible bricks elevate the gameplay experience or sink it. So, let's cut to a graphic. Oh wait, we don't do intros anymore? I guess let's cut to the table. So here is our Battleship U-Build, or U-Build Battleship, not exactly sure which direction that's supposed to go. Uh, but the U-Build line was clearly meant to compete with the LEGO Games line, uh, but neither of them were really successful um, because LEGO basically oversaturated the market with poor quality games. Uh, the bricks were fine, but the games themselves were eh. Uh, so let's see if this is any better. Um, the box is pretty cheap and flimsy. It's almost like a cereal box. It's just, it's not very good quality. And once we get inside, it's not much better, honestly. So you get a bunch of cardboard and the stands here for the players are made up of cardboard as well. So that is probably their attempt to keep the cost down. Uh, but you basically get this board and then you have to build it with these pieces here and it, you kind of build it into a laptop shaped thing and it creates a shield uh, for each player. So there's that. Again, you get one for each player as well as the parts for the stand uh, to create the shield and it will look somewhat like this. Uh, you get two instruction manuals, which is something the LEGO games also did. One of them is just how to build everything. So this is your step-by-step -step instructions. We'll take a look at the ships momentarily. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to build it. And then this one is the rules of play. So I'm glad that they separate them into two different manuals. Uh, and then this tells you how to play the game, which I will go over in just a moment. Uh, and then each player has this to keep track of their hits and whatnot. This is kind of a carry tray but it's pretty rudimentary. It's just a molded piece of plastic. There's supposed to be a second one. Mine did not come with that, so players have to share the tray. And now this is the fun part, right? This is what makes it unique to just your standard battleship game. And let's determine whether or not that uniqueness is worth it. So I'll take a couple of these ships out. Uh, so there's a red player and a black player, and each ship uh, comes with just a standard plate that you slot into a board, and that is what allows it to be placed on the board. It also shows you the number of hits that that ship will take, like so, and then you would put this on the board uh, on the grid. An interesting thing that I noticed is that they actually swapped the battleship and the carrier. In traditional battleship, the carrier is the five uh, hit ship and the battleship is four hits. But for whatever reason in this version, they have decided to swap that. So you instead get a four space carrier, which I think is odd. I don't know why they made that change. Uh, from a mechanic perspective, it works the same. Um, this one still takes four hits, this one takes five, but I don't know why they swapped which one does which. It's just a little odd. Uh, mine is actually missing one of the ships, uh, but it's really not necessary because you basically just play this exactly like Battleship. Uh, so the rules, if you know the rules for Battleship, you know how to play this game. The only difference comes with the extra pieces. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the ships out here just so you can see what they look like. So here's our PT boat, there's our uh, destroyer, I think, and then there's a submarine. The submarine looks a bit goofy, uh, but so there's again, again there's two of each color, or two of each color, there's two of each boat, one in each color. 
and that's what they look like. Now, the customization comes in with the uh, turrets themselves. So each of the dark gray pieces on the boat is considered a weapon. And the rules say that you don't have to put the same amount of weapons on each boat as number of hits. You can change them around. So theoretically, if I wanted to, I could take this battleship and just arm it to the teeth with these extra weapons. So this one would now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one could now strike seven times. Basically, you play the uh, where each ship gets a number of target can target can target uh, a number equal to the number of weapons that it has, and that's something that you can do in regular battleship. But in this version, you can actually change the number of weapons. Uh, so even though this one has one, two, three seven weapons, uh, it would still be sunk after only five hits. Uh, but And this one, even though it has two weapons, it would still be sunk after three hits. So you can kind of mix and match and theoretically uh, strategize uh, which ones you want to prioritize and which ones you want to protect. Uh, going back to the component quality, uh, as you can see here, this, this radar dish doesn't really fit on there properly, so definitely some issues with the tolerances. Uh, these are obviously not real Lego bricks, so the quality isn't going to be as good. Uh, although recently there's been a couple questionable Lego quality issues as well, so I'm not blind to that, uh, but it is still something to point out. So there's that. You get all these little ships, and of course the customizable part is just the fact that you can swap these gray bits around and give them different weapons. Other than that, it's pretty much the exact same game. Let's go up to the top for my final thoughts. All right, so overall thoughts on You Build Battleship. It's not better and it's not worse than the original game, uh, but to be fair, the original game is a four or five out of 10 for me, so that puts this right at about five out of 10. Um, the good news is if you do want it, it's not terribly expensive to find secondhand, uh, but I don't think there's anything really worth it there for adults. Uh, granted, I don't really like the original board game, as I stated, uh, but the components are eh, the plastic blocks are okay. I guess you could use them with your Lego bricks, but their tolerances are slightly off and they just feel kind of cheap. Uh, so overall, not fantastic. However, something I am curious about is that Lego just announced a partnership with Asmodee. So, Hopefully that won't be a colossal failure like the original LEGO games line was, but that is something I'm definitely interested in, and I'll certainly have to do a video in the future about the LEGO games line itself because it is a topic that interests me. So if you want to see that, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you again in another video. Take care. Bye.